the secret to diabetes is hidden in the definition. Now, if you have diabetes and you do your own research, you're going to be completely and utterly confused. Because if you look up the definition of diabetes, it will say that it's hyperglycemia, which is high blood sugar, which is affecting the large vessels, especially in the heart. It's going to affect the tiny blood vessels of the eye and the kidney. And also, it's going to affect your nerves, as in creating damage in the peripheral nerves, the nerves at the bottom of the feet and the hands. So your fingers will get numb and pain and sometimes a burning sensation. Now, if we look at the causation of insulin, it will talk about a lack of insulin or a decrease in insulin, since insulin is the hormone that controls the blood sugars. So if we don't have the hormonal controls of lowering blood sugar, and that's not there, blood sugar starts going higher and higher, and you're diabetic. Now, take a look at what controls insulin, the pancreas. So the pancreas, through its beta cells, make insulin. The insulin goes through the blood, it connects to certain receptors to create a function of lowering the blood sugar. And so what's going to cause a lack of insulin is either the lack of production of insulin or on the other side here, a blocked receptor. So the receptor for insulin becomes resistive, as in insulin resistance. Okay, So either we have insulin resistance or we have a pancreas that's not able to produce insulin. But in Guyton's physiology and other medical textbooks, you see this little clue here as the first thing that happens when you start to have diabetes is you have what's called compensatory hyperinsulinemia. Now, what is that? That means that when the cells start resisting insulin, the pancreas will compensate by making more insulin so we still have the function of lowering blood sugar to a certain degree. And so we have insulin resistance. So the pancreas is going to compensate by making more insulin. Okay, so that's, it's compensating. Okay. And then what happens after a period of time, the second thing that happens is you no longer are able to compensate because the beta cells are now dysfunctional, they're exhausted, they're overwhelmed, and they stop working. And so when this starts to go down, the blood sugar starts to go higher and higher and higher. So the real big question to figure this out is what's causing the initial hyperinsulin situation? What is causing this increase in insulin? Well, for that, we have to look up hyperinsulinemia, which is very interesting because if we look at Wikipedia and what causes high insulin, it says neoplasm, which is a tumor, carb malabsorption, okay, pancreatic cancer, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and trans fats. It also goes on to say results from a variety of diseases. They're talking about these, as well as sugar in the diet. Now that's like right at the very, very end, and there's no real emphasis of this. And it's really nowhere else in this whole page. And so if you're new at this and you're just reading this and you don't know the massive connection between consuming sugar and diabetes, you might focus more on these things right here. Wow, maybe I have cancer. Maybe I have PCOS. And focus on something that is so rare that you're going to miss this right here. I mean, if you knew to grab maybe a physiology book like Guidance Physiology and look up insulin, but you probably never do that. But if you did, you'd find all sorts of information on what triggers insulin. The big one is carbohydrates. So in order to control this, you must lower the carbs in the diet. But you might be confused if you read this book right here, Merck's Manual under the chapter of diabetes, because it's talking about the diet for diabetes. It says this, diet composition. There is no need to disproportionately restrict the intake of carbohydrates in the diet of most diabetics. What? That is absolutely bad advice. Because what they're going to recommend is you just manage it with metformin. And if you consume more carbohydrates, just increase your 
medication to adjust for that. Now, there's some other additional things on this page that were very interesting to me. They're talking about mice studies. They mentioned that a high-fat diet has a causative role in hyperinsulinemia. Now, if you're an average person, you're reading this, you're going to go, wow, I need to start cutting my fat out of my diet. And the problem with even reading the study is you're not going to even find the complete study. You're going to have to buy the study online. Um, so if you were to buy the study online and download it, and then find out what they actually fed the mice, what do they consider a high-fat diet, which I've actually done this. I've ordered a study, and I've researched what they feed these mice. You're going to find that this is not just a high-fat diet. This is a high-fat slash high carbohydrate diet. Now we have a little piece of omitted information that could be devastating if you're operating off of this false information. Because if you combine carbs with fat or carbs with protein versus just consuming carbs alone, you're going to have a much greater impact or spike in insulin when you combine a high fat and high carb diet. So no wonder this high fat diet is a causative factor in creating high levels of insulin. Okay, so then you get down to the bottom of the page and it talks about the treatment. Diet, exercise, metformin. They also mention consuming cinnamon, like in cinnamon and sugar on your toast, right? And so when you look further on the page, uh, specifically this, what they're talking about with this diet, they're talking about lowering simple carbohydrates, okay, not actually eliminating simple carbohydrates like sugar, but lowering them and replacing them with whole grains, okay? Now, they didn't even mention consuming vegetables. They're talking about adding grains if you have too much insulin. It's the carbohydrates that increase insulin more than anything else. And whole grains are carbohydrates. In the next sentence, they say reduce potatoes. So they don't tell you to eliminate potatoes, just reduce them. Again, a potato is a carbohydrate. Why are you even talking about a potato? You should be eliminating all carbs or at least bringing them down significantly. And then they actually add a sentence in there that says you need to increase your legumes, especially soy. They didn't mention anything about any other beans or anything. They just made a point about consuming soy. So I looked up the study and what they were talking about. And of course, this study was a questionnaire study. Very, very scientific, right? Where there's a million variables. You have people that smoke. You have people that eat a ran random thing. And how are you going to isolate that it, it was the soy that reduced the insulin levels in your blood? You can't. So obviously, this was put in here with some slight bias, as well as this one right here. And so this is why I do videos to help put attention on the important stuff so you don't have to get lost in the sea of confusion in the area of health. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.